my dearest friends uh, from the Aspen Institute of Romania, um, dear all, I'm, I'm deeply, deeply uh, sorry for not being able to be with you in person in Bucharest. But I thank you for inviting me to give you a few of my thoughts. I'm uh, chairing the Innovation Board in NATO. I run the cyber adaptation in NATO. And this is why this Aspen Digital Security Dialogue is very relevant to our broader conversation. I would like to say uh, the immense importance of the ITU. I visited ITU in Geneva in my official capacity, uh, and I know that the conference uh, in Bucharest will be taking very important decisions. ITU is an immensely important organization of global um, nature and uh, will be helping us to shape uh, an international uh, framework for the technologies that we know today and the ones that will be coming very fast uh, tomorrow. Uh, dear Sergio, uh, thank you for the invitation. And hello to the whole Aspen team uh, in Romania. Of course, uh, the Aspen Institute in Romania, like all the Aspen family worldwide, um, is very much dedicated to the value-based leadership. And uh, what more interesting uh, and complex conversation than to think how can we have innovation, new technology, cyber, name it, also ingrained uh, with values. Because the ethical part of the new technologies is very important to our citizens. And I, I, I applaud the way in which the Aspen Institute in Romania and all the other Aspens are embarking on this very important conversation. Digital security, the focus of today's event, is very much at the heart of this conversation. You also bring together the key players from the public and private sector, from academia and civil society. Because no single actor, irrespective of how big or influential can be, they cannot keep the digital space safe. This is, in essence, a collective effort. NATO plays its part in this effort. We are stepping up efforts to keep our technological edge. We are enhancing our resilience to eliminate dependencies and reduce vulnerabilities. And we are strengthening our partnerships with relevant stakeholders. Let me briefly go through these three points. First, on retaining the edge. With our open societies and thriving private sector, allied nations enjoy an important competitive edge. We have the best universities, the best scientists, the best engineers, and freedom, by definition, is conducive to creativity and innovation. But today, the competition for strategic advantage and the advancements in the development and using of emerging disruptive technologies is intensifying. Probably for the first time in centuries, the political West is challenged by formidable uh, adversaries and rivals. This competition impacts our economy, our security, and also our societies, our democratic societies. This intersection of these two major trends will shape the new old order and influence the values that underpin the way in which human societies will be organized. An epical fight for technology superiority, along with the one between democracy and coercion. This is also the combination between technology and value-based leadership. And we witness this today already that nations that do not share our values, like Russia and China, are increasingly challenging our edge and our values and the way in which we see freedom democracy, and the rule of law. In the last decade or so, Russia has been investing vast sums into technologies from hypersonic missiles to cyber weapons and disinformation capabilities. We have seen cyber attacks on our governments and companies, interference in our elections, propaganda campaigns to undermine us. And now Russia has invaded Ukraine simply because it dared to seek its own path in the world. We are learning important lessons from the conflict, one example is how cyber malign activities and disinformation must be considered and addressed together and not separately, as they are the most forcefully employed jointly in the digital realm. China's ambition is to have the most technologically advanced armed forces in the world by 2050, and also to have to become a leader in artificial intelligence by the end of this decade. It's investing in quantum, it's investing in space, and it's investing heavily to achieve this overall ambition. Faced with this growing competition, we are redoubling our efforts to keep our technological edge. This is why we are establishing a Defense Innovation Accelerator for the North Atlantic, Diana, 
to identify and develop the next generation of technologies and help startups, including from the newcomers into the alliance, to bring their talent and bring their technology and bring uh, their contribution uh, to the forefront of what we do. With headquarters in Europe and North America, Diana will connect entrepreneurs with defense practitioners and markets all across the alliance. It will bring our best and brightest minds together to design innovative solutions to the security challenges we face together. Romania will host two Diana test centers, the INCAS, the National Institute for Aerospace Research, focusing on hypersonic technologies, and the International Center for Excellence in Artificial Intelligence at the University Politecnica of Bucharest, also my alma mater. I'm confident that many other test centers and accelerators from Romania and from many other countries in the region will be part of Diana pretty, pretty soon. At the same time, NATO and our leaders in Madrid decided to set up a 1 a billion euro innovation fund to provide secure funding for startups in developing cutting-edge dual-use technologies. We know that for startups, especially from our region, the crossing the death valley between an idea and the validation of that idea, many times not that many are able to cross that difficult path. And some of them do have the money and the resources to test their ideas and have a little bit of seed money before they go to the venture capital and transform their ideas into uh, uh, marketable, uh, intellectually property-based innovations. So this is what we do in NATO. We strengthen our innovation ecosystem. And I'm counting on each and every of the nations in NATO, soon to be 32 nations, 1 billion people, from the very advanced nations with deep uh, uh, research and, 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 and uh, financial markets to the smaller allies, to the ones that need to be together, because for us in NATO, interoperability and speaking the same language of innovation is very important for the security of our one billion citizens from all geographies and from all walks of life. This brings me to my second point, which is resilience. I'm also chairing uh, the newly created Resilience Committee in NATO. This is about being able to better respond and recover from stress, shock and surprise. And also, and perhaps mostly in the digital space, where disruption is quick, easy, and brutal many times. It takes only a click of a button to disrupt networks. A single social media message can cause widespread confusion. In today's digital world, our nations are more interdependent and also more vulnerable. We cannot let our competitors or adversaries exploit, exploit this. So we need to make not only our governments, our agencies and ministries stronger, we have to make also our private sector stronger, we have to make our societies stronger and our infrastructure more resilient. So we have to be able to function despite disruption. And when we bring back to normal, also to anticipate the changes for the future. So resilience today is a societal part. It is not only restoring the status quo ante, but also to use that disruption, use, use that difficult moment to anticipate the way forward. We also need to make sure that our supply chains are more diverse and more secure. We cannot depend on Chinese rare earth supplies to operate our phones and computers or our 5G networks or fuel from Russia to fly our fighter jets. You see Russia using and abusing the energy weapon against us and our democracies. These dependencies make us vulnerable and foreign control over critical infrastructure like 5G, microelectronics, and also the unethical use of AI um, have a role and can weaken us. So enhancing our resilience is a team sport. And now I come to my last point, and this is partnership. This is something I do on behalf of the Secretary General uh, with the more than 40 nations that are NATO's partners, with many organizations, starting with the European Union, um, with the OECD, which is a new partner for NATO, and for many other organizations of regional or global nature. Our best bet to be digital risk resistant is to work closely together. Governments, armed forces, think tanks, academia, businesses, civil society, and involving the private sector is immensely and particularly critical. Startups and big tech companies lead the way in the development of new technologies. They make and shape the technologies of today and those of tomorrow. They are already mastering the tech ABC, atoms, bits, and cells, 
and are indispensable partners for our continuously developing our resilience and our military and societal resilience. This is why we are working more closely together with the private sector and together we can ensure the future technologies work for us, not against us, strengthen our democracies, not weaken that, and underpin our freedom and not the ideologies of our rivals and competitors. We are also cooperating with other like-minded partner countries and international organizations. I mentioned the European Union. We learn from each other and join forces to champion new tech, bolster resilience and protect the rules-based order, and also to introduce in the use of technologies ethical and responsible use norms. And this is where, again, the ITU is relevant for shaping a system of global norms where, of course, progress and competition uh, uh, is encouraged, but also responsible use of these technologies is also underpinning the way in which we envisage a world of today and of tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in a world where digital borders matter as much as the physical ones. Our sovereignty is not just about geography anymore. And our security is no longer assured by military means and actors alone. NATO continues to adapt to this world, to keep our people and our values safe. I thank again my dearest friends from the Aspen Institute of Romania. I wish the uh, conference in Bucharest of the ITU massive success. And uh, I'll be visiting Geneva with a new leadership to be elected uh, as soon as my schedule will allow it. Good luck. La revedere. Mul succes.